Hi chalk and lettering friends, welcome to another month and another fun design that we're going to do this month on our chalkboard. Um, we're going to do this cute design, um, Oh Sweet Summer. I don't know about you guys, but um, we're just finishing up homeschooling here in Utah and we are very excited to officially start our summer break, even though it kind of feels like that already started <laughs> besides the homeschooling. Um, so I thought this would be a really fun design because I wanted to kind of touch on layering Last month we talked about adding borders um, with creating depth with your chalkboard, um, but there's a lot of times in my um, designs that all overlap or underlap um, letters with each other and that creates another element of depth. Also putting the graphics behind letters. Um, so I thought that was something that we should cover. Um, so you can see here I have the O um, and the S was summer kind of wrapped around each other and that creates some depth. And then we have a watermelon piece that's behind the lettering here and that also creates some depth. Um, so this is a really fun technique and I just thought it would be fun to kind of focus on it. And I'm gonna be showing you how to draw these cute little watermelons as well as if you want to do this quote with um, an ice cream cone instead of a watermelon, I'm gonna show you how to draw um, ice cream cones as well. So let's get started. Okay, so those of you that are new to my online classroom, you have this PDF download that is available below this video. You can download it and print it or save it to your computer and it's gonna have all the steps that I'm gonna demonstrate right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to draw this half, the half watermelon um, and then we're gonna do a slice, which is a quarter of a watermelon and then I'm gonna show you how to combine them and overlap them to add some dimension. All right, friends. So the first step is to find your curved edge that you're going to use for your watermelon. Um, so I'm just using this old dish that I have that I use for paint markers. Um, set that on your surface. And you can either sketch this out first um, with your chalk pencil or your chalk. I'm going to go ahead and add my chalk marker into this so that we can see the colors. So here is our rind. Okay, that's step one. Then we're going to create that inside um, separation with the rind and I'm going to use this marker, this fine point one, and you have to be a little bit cautious because with these curved objects, um, they're going to match up differently, but that's okay. They're not going to be like perfectly spaced all the way across, so you just don't want to overlap too much. Alright, so then we're going to add our pink for our, in our watermelon, what do they call it? Watermelon fruit, flesh, I'm not sure. Okay, and then let that dry for a second. And we're going to come in and we're going to connect the two ends with a straight end like that. So those are the first couple steps. Okay, so I've let this dry and I, I've showed this trick before, but if you have a very nice like porcelain still smooth chalkboard and you're using your chalk markers, once the chalk marker is dry, you can actually come back with your pencil eraser and you can clean up those little spots that maybe you needed to with the chalk marker and you don't have to get your chalkboard wet, which is such a huge benefit. So. Clean that up if you need to, because mine overlapped a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna come back with my bold marker and color this in. Make sure you try to do it before it dries, because if you don't, it will scratch the chalk marker off in the dried areas, just like it, we just I just showed you with uh, erasing it. So try to get everything colored in before it starts to dry so that it looks a little bit more smooth might be a little streaky in some spots. Um, some colors dry faster than others, I've noticed. This pink is usually pretty good about staying not drying as fast. Okay, so there is your next step. Now we're gonna let that dry. All right, so step number five with the watermelon is to create the seeds now. So now that we've got this dry, um, if you're using chalk, you wouldn't have to wait for it to dry. You could just do this technique right away. Um, but now that it's dry, I'm going to come in and the seed is like a raindrop shape like this. Okay. Um, and you can do it in different directions throughout here. Um, I just do like a few, like less is better in this, like three or four, probably maybe five. Um, so I just start over here and I kind of just start sketching it. And you can see what happens is the let's see if I can zoom in for you you can see that the pencil has already started to scratch some of the um, 
chalk marker off. So let's go back out. Okay. All right. So there's one. I'm going to do one that's kind of like upside down. You can have them be all facing the same direction, or you can add some variety by um, having them go different directions and different shapes. Okay, so this will be my last one here. And you can see that they've already started to kind of scratch the surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my eraser and kind of just clean that up. If you race too much, don't worry. You can always come back and add a little bit of the chalk marker if you need to. But the eraser and the pencil just kind of lift that chalk marker off. If you have a more porous chalkboard, this might not work as well. So you might have to add a little bit of water. Now I'm going to show you how to do kind of the half version of this with a little bite out of it. Um, and we're going to add some dimension um, by overlapping them. And also, don't if you don't like this like flat kind of two dimensional feel of this, and you want to add some highlights. You could go back and add some highlights to your seeds with your pencil or your chalk or a white chalk marker. Um, and then you could add some like little squiggly lines down here, like what a normal, like a real life uh, rind would look like, you know, something like that. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same thing and I'm gonna just kind of angle it a little bit of a different direction like that. Um, and then you're just going to do like a small sliver of it, like just a tiny, tiny bit. And you can see it doesn't even curve that much, but it should kind of scratch off the paint, at paint that you're writing on top of. And then I know that the pink is going to go here, so I don't want my chalk markers to mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the dry part of that. And these are the same steps as we did before. a little bit it's a little bit dry there we go all right so you're gonna follow those same steps as before except okay it's not really wanting to do that for me is it Let's see if I can get this marker to work for you this doesn't happen very often when we are recording so Okay, and pump that a little bit more. So the difference is, is once you get your bottom here, instead of a cre instead of having two lines to create this straight line here, we're actually gonna do a triangle shape up. So we're gonna connect the lines. Make sure that's working for me. We're gonna go from each end up and connect it into kind of like a triangle shape. So we're gonna go from this one up. So see how it scratched all that off? That's what's happening is it's scratching it off and then it's like carrying it and then I'm not able to like get any ink to come through. So, all right, that is how you start that process right there. Now we're gonna fill in the shape the same way that we did before, fill this whole section in. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my bold marker of that same color, it's a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fill in the shape. And you know, where it's dry, I'm just gonna kinda skip over that because it's just gonna scratch off. So, fill in the shape like that, and then um, once it's dry, we'll come back and add our leaves. And I'll show you how to make this look a little bit more smooth. Um, and create the like shadow behind it. Now that this is dry, I can use my um, eraser to kind of come back and I can clean up the chalk marker in the areas that I don't want it. So we're gonna erase anything that's in between the rind and that, just blow it away. I'm also gonna do it like right underneath it. So doing this just kind of has the, makes the illusion of that you have like a shadow there and then also allows you to have that like depth of like okay this is in front of this um so we'll do this one here too and you can kind of see how this starts to transform and do it all the way down here so now 
you know for sure that this piece is in front of that piece, okay? So that's how you do that. Now we're gonna go and do the same thing we did here. We're gonna come in and we're gonna add a few of our seeds. And I'm just gonna freehand it here. And this top part I'm gonna leave because we're gonna also add a little bite mark. And the easiest way to do that is don't think too much about it. I just do cute little like, cute little bumps that come around. And then you can come in and erase the main part of it so it looks like someone took a bite out of that little piece of watermelon right there. Okay, and we'll erase these ones. So these both can be drawn separately and then obviously, and obviously you can put the bite mark in the big one or the small one and then you just add your highlights. I also wanted to show you how to draw a really cute, simple ice cream cone. Um, in case you wanted to do an ice cream cone with the Oh Sweet Summer instead of the watermelon. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with two parallel lines. There's the top line and then we'll just scoot down a little bit and then we'll have the next line. Then from the ends, we're just gonna come down slightly. This is kind of like the base of the cone and you can angle them in. You can make them offset. They don't have to be perfect here. This is just kind of a fun sketch. From these two lines, then you're gonna bring them an angled line in. And so now you can see that this is like the base of our cone. And then bring another line down. It's just a lot of like lines and connecting for the cone. Okay, so then once you have this, you can connect them with a little bit of a round bottom like that or straight, either way. Then the next step is to come um, to the cone and you can use your ruler for this or you can just kind of freehand it. We're gonna add cross stitching. So you go one direction all the way through the shape and then you switch and go the opposite direction. Just like that. All right, now we have like the basic ske sketch of our cone. We're gonna add our ice cream to the top. So the easiest way I've found to do this is to do the outside shape of the, the ice cream and then add all your details afterwards. So from each end, I'm just gonna come up with these little half circles and they don't have to be the same size. They can be opposite size. And then the top, you're gonna connect it with this like, it's gonna be like a dome shape but with a point at the end. So if you're afraid about the point, just do a dome and then add a little point to the top. Okay, and that's kind of how you're gonna connect it. And every time I draw these, they kind of turn out a little bit different just because the shapes are a little bit different. So then once you have this basic shape, you can come in and right here where the curve is, you can curve it in, you can curve it up. You can kind of create the swirls of what an ice cream cone will look like, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to add some detail. So the last step is to come in and add your shadowing and highlights. So here I'm adding some highlights to the actual ice cream. Um, you can come in and add like sprinkles or like whatever little shapes you want. You know, kind of just dress it up. I'm giving you the basics here. Then with the cone, we have a basic sketch here, but you can totally come in with your marker or your chalk and kind of make it look a little more realistic. We can add some thickness and character to some of these lines because we all know what an ice cream cone looks like, I would assume. <laughs> you can kind of round these shapes if you want to and add more highlights here as well. Okay, so once you add your highlights and you have your shape that you want your cone to be at, I'm gonna fix that a little bit. Don't forget to come back with your finger or your Q-tip and kind of blend all of this together so it has like those that smooth feeling just like ice cream yeah this one is really fun to do and then you can um like i said add the sprinkles and all that stuff and then you can use your eraser to come in and add like some darker sprinkles in the highlights just to give it some more variety. Since we have practiced everything that we needed to practice, we've got all of our drawing elements, our lettering elements, we've talked about layering. Now we're ready to get this design on our chalkboard. I'm so excited. So um, I'm gonna be doing the Oh Sweet Summer with the watermelons, um, but you are welcome to do the one with the um, ice cream cones. It'd be the exact same type of style, just add the cones instead of this. Um, I'm gonna be using my VersaChalk Rustic Porcelain Chalkboard. I've got my VersaChalk markers. 
I, you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of a lot of color, but I feel like I need to use some color on those watermelons because they're so pretty. So I have the classic um, green sage color, and then we've got our pink, um, like I think this is like the neons, um, the neon pink color to go with that. And then I've got my white chalk markers for the lettering, and then some chalk and my chalk pastel pencil to do the sketching and add detail. Let's get started. So we're gonna talk a little bit about layout. The nice thing about this type of layout is I've left it really simple and you can make it as complicated as you want. You can center all the words and the lettering and add more watermelons or ice creams around the wording, or you can leave the wording off to the side and kind of fill in this like smaller space. Um, so I'm using a smaller chalkboard, so this is what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to kind of offset my lettering a little bit and then fill in the rest of the space with the watermelons. So even though I'm doing that, I always like to find my center first. So on your chalkboard, always find your center by just kind of putting a little dot just marking it right where you feel like the center is close by. This just gives you a visual of knowing where the center is. Um, okay, then with the lettering that we're doing this month, it's it doesn't have a baseline. So it's a bouncing letter style. Even the block lettering kind of bounces back and forth, does not sit on the baseline. So these guidelines I'm gonna put are really just guidelines. They're, we are not going to follow through with them. Okay, so I'm gonna have my lettering, the word summer, be about eight, eight inches this way. Oh, maybe actually more like seven because I need room for my watermelon here. Um, and then we don't want our other lettering to go too close to the edge. So we're gonna kind of just add a little line there to give us a guideline, okay? Maybe a, a little one there. Um, and this just gives me a visual of maybe I want the word summer here and the O oh sweet above it. I might shift it down, kind of depends. These are just guidelines. So sketch with your chalk. And then we're gonna add the lettering with your, your chalk pencil, um, and then we'll go from there. So the other thing is, when you know you have block lettering, this one won't matter as much because um, we kinda of have a variety of sizes here and they're not all sitting on a baseline. But I always count how many word, uh, letters are in the word. So here we have six letters. So I know I have six letters that need to fit in this space. And so when I measure it or I look at it, it gives me a visual of how many letters need to be off this side and what, how many letters need to be off this side. So say we're going by seven, so here's three and a half. I know that I need to have S-U-M-M-E-R. So I need to have three letters here and three letters here. That just gives me a good visual. Um, you can mark it and divide it more if you feel like you need to. This design doesn't necessarily require that, but, okay. And then this is kind of like a, like I said, kind of a jumpy, a uh, bouncing um, block lettering, which I, I didn't even really think about that until I started thinking about how none of these are sitting on a baseline. They're just kind of bouncing everywhere and they're kind of fun. Um, so it is kind of a bouncing block lettering because they're going everywhere. All right, so now that we've sketched out summer, we're gonna write oh sweet at the top. Um, and I might have to make mine a little bit smaller than the design I sketched just because uh, I didn't leave myself a ton of room. So that's up to you. Remember, overlapping is kind of our goal here. So it's not a big deal if you have letters the overlap because this will just add more depth and variety to what we're doing. Okay, so there's our lettering sketched and now we're gonna erase our guidelines because we don't need those anymore. You can see our chalk mark, our chalk pencil stays there. Makes it a little chalky, but it's that's the style that I like. And now I'm just gonna kind of sketch where my watermelons are gonna be. Okay, so from what we did before, I'm just coming in and adding the first few steps of drawing our watermelons. And I'm not gonna add all the detail yet because that's gonna be for when the chalk markers come into play um, once we're ready to trace this. So go through and just decide where you're gonna put all your watermelon pieces and um, just do those first few steps of it so you get the, the idea of where they're gonna be. Um, and then we'll come back with our chalk marker and we're gonna do our lettering first. Once that's finalized, then we'll do the watermelons. So now we're gonna go up here and do the lettering. If you're worried about smearing this stuff, I don't ever worry about it. I usually just clean it up at the end if I need to. Um, but a good thing that you can do is just use like a cloth 
to set nicely down. Just make sure you don't move around with it, um, but you can set your hand on it. This is great if you're left-handed. You can use this technique too so that you don't smear anything that you're going across. Um, you can always like set your hand on something like a piece of paper or a rag. Um, it also is comfortable, but I prefer to have my hand <laughs> sliding around on the chalkboard. That's just preference because I've done it for so long. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our O suite. Um, oh goodness, look at that. So if that happens, just try to kind of play with it. We were gonna have a thicker stroke there anyway. Just kind of bled a little more than I thought. Or... Okay, so we're going through when I'm adding faux calligraphy. So I'm adding thickness to all those down strokes as I'm sketching this. And I will add PDFs for you to practice writing um, all these letters and their basic strokes. Okay, so there's O. And then we've got sweet. And if you notice your marker is starting to get a little streaky, might need to pump it a little bit. All right, and then sweet. And I, the reason I add the thickness to the down strokes as I'm writing is because you wanna do that before it dries. Because if you come back and try to add thickness after you've let the chalk marker dry, then it will scratch the ch chalk marker, which I've, you've already seen in other videos. Okay, so now that we've done sweet, oh sweet, with our faux calligraphy, I am gonna go, we're gonna switch tips and we're gonna do the summer with the opposite uh, chisel tip. All right, this marker is a little, it's very juicy. So what I'm gonna do is on, on the ends of all of these letters, I'm adding a serif, like so like a little cap at the end, which is just like my little line. And then I'm gonna come around and just trace all these. And the thing I like about the chisel tip is it's a little bit thicker, so it allows you to get your thick down strokes quickly before all of this dries. So remember, we are overlapping on purpose. So if it feels like it's kind of like um, out of your element to be like overlapping all of these things, that is kind of the goal for this project is to learn how to overlap. So see how my my U and my my S are touching. Um, the serifs might run into the letter next to it. That's kind of what we're going for because I'm going to show you kind of how to make that work in your favor. All right, so continue to go through each letter. Add some thickness to the down strokes. I'll add also PDFs on block lettering with serifs, like the block lettering with this detail. A super fun way to dress up your block lettering and not have it just plain. Ooh, see how juicy that is? It's coming out so fast. So just be careful um, when that happens. It's a bummer when you have it happen and it like ruins your entire design. I'm making this work, but um, it might not have worked if this design wasn't so um, fun and not not like so perfect. Okay. There is our lettering. Now we're gonna let that dry for a minute. Now that our lettering is all dry, we're gonna come back and erase what we want um, to give that depth that I was talking about. Okay, so if you look at here, anything that you want behind is what you're gonna erase. So if I want the S behind this part of the O, I'm gonna erase it on both sides. If I want it on, in the front, then I'm not gonna erase it. Um, so that's kind of the rule of thumb, is if you want it to be behind something, you have to erase it on both sides of that one stroke. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little tricky, but let's practice it. Okay, so if I want the S to be behind this stroke, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase with my eraser um, the S on both sides 
That one's being a little tough on me, but it's just because it was so thick right there. Let's try the pencil. It might scratch it off better. Okay. So I erased the S on both sides of this, and now I can erase it with this, because which gives the illusion that the O is in front. Okay, so now we're gonna have the, um, we're gonna leave this connection, because I think that looks nice, um, and then we're gonna erase the H on O, because we want the M to be in front of it. This does take some practice, just like playing around with what looks good. And you might have to come back and fix some things after you do your erasing, <clears throat> if you want to change what's behind and what's in front. Okay, <clears throat> so next, let's see, the next overlap we have here is probably this one. Um, like some of these ones we're not gonna worry about because they're not overlapping enough that we need to erase anything. Um, but we see we have the T here that is behind the E, and, or like, connecting with the E and the R. And I kind of like the way that looks. And so what we'll do is we'll just erase the T where the E overlaps to kind of give it that pop. And we'll do the same. Actually, let's go ahead and have it come back forward and have it be on top of the R. Look how pretty that looks. Okay, so that's just like the basics of how to do it. And then we'll come back and we'll like clean it up with all of our lines. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of my pencil um, lines that I didn't use. Anything there that is left that I didn't plan on using. All right, now let's go back and we'll add some color to our lettering and we'll add some shadow lines. Okay, so I just realized that I didn't erase the, <clears throat> the S over here because I moved on too quick. So we want to erase the S that's right underneath the O. I was wondering why it kind of looked weird. <laughs> okay, so now that we've done that, the S is officially behind the O. Now we can come back with, I'm gonna come back with the chalk mark or chalk pencil and add some shadow line detail to the lettering above. And then we're gonna add colored shadow lines to the word summer. So remember, if this is new for you, I'll, um, I'll put a sheet for review, and also if you're new, you can check it out. But a shadow line is just a little line detail that we're adding to the same side of every stroke. And it's pretending that there's a light source, and pretending a shadow drops on one side of everything. And it really just adds a lot of character to your lettering. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a little pink um, shadow line to the word summer. Okay, I was getting ahead of myself. Um, before we add the shadow line of the pink, um, I wanna come and clean up the sh all the serif details that we added. And I'm gonna use my fine marker this time. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the ends and I'm gonna kind of um, connect them to the line. Just be careful because the lettering is already dry. So you might end up scratching a little bit, but see how that kind of just can cleans up that connection. So we're just adding like a little triangle shape that connects all those um, lines together it makes it look a little bit more finished so here we'll do the same and we'll do the same with this side um, normally I would add this before it dries I just was getting ahead of myself <clears throat> but there's a way to remedy remedy it not a problem um, I prefer to like finish them this, the serifs off like this because I think it just makes the lettering look a lot more finished and gives it more of a formal alert look. So, okay, I'm gonna do that to all of the line details and finish those off and then we'll add our shadow line. All right, I've added the detail um, to all of the ends of the lettering and I'm pretty sure they're all dry. Just be careful. Now I'm gonna come back with my chalk marker, um, the fine tip pink, which is what the watermelons are all gonna be. And I'm just gonna add that same shadow line all the way 
around our lettering for the word summer. And wherever you don't have room, just skip it. If you try to force the shadow line in a space that there's no space, it's definitely noticeable. So like right here, in between the U's, um, top serifs, like I'm not gonna add a shadow line there because it's too small and it just looks too forced. And so even here, like that's too small. So I just skip it. As long as you have the shadow line on majority of it, like it's gonna look amazing. Um, but you don't need to force a shadow line to be in these like little tiny spots. Just do the best you can. But you can see it still makes a huge difference even if you skip a few spots that maybe you don't have room for. And I'm actually really enjoying this pink. I haven't used it very much and I've actually really enjoyed it. It's really pretty. Okay, so there's the detail to our lettering. Now let's finish our watermelon. Step one of finishing our watermelons is our rind. And I am going to freehand this just because I've already got a guideline. Um, but you're welcome to use your tool again if you don't feel comfortable tracing freehand. I've gotten pretty pretty good at it over the, the years, so it's not a huge deal for me to just trace those curved lines or straight lines. Alright, so there's that for those two. And then don't be afraid to rotate your chalkboard. Um, it's a net more natural for me to pull my wrist down than it is to move it up. And so that's how I'm able to trace those lines a little bit more consistently, is I always rotate my chalkboard so that I can have that same motion of pulling my hand down the line versus trying to like push it up the line, if that makes sense. So do what's natural for you. Um, and then here, oh, that one got a little juicy on me. We're not gonna write over the R, we're just gonna skip it because we've ar we already know that it's behind the R. So we're just gonna add a little bit of detail there. And that could have been a disaster because that came out really fast. I didn't even pump it right there, but. Okay, so there is our rind. And now we're gonna let those dry a minute. Um, I'm gonna probably erase that one and then we'll fill in the pink. All right, so I know my pink is gonna overlap right here. So I'm gonna erase my green. All right, our chalk marker has completely dried. I'm just going through and I'm kind of cleaning up. You can see all the pencil marks I have here from when we sketched. I'm just using my eraser very carefully so I don't erase any chalk marker. Erasing all of those little marks that I made that we don't need anymore. Now we're gonna add our seeds and our bite marks. <clears throat> Okay, 
So I'm going to use my pencil first. I'm going to go ahead and do a bark bite mark up here because I think it'll be really cute. So I'm just going to kind of sketch in a cute little bite mark. Um, and then maybe we'll do another one on the side over here. Okay. Then we'll sketch in some seeds randomly here and there. I think that one looks good. Um, typically, if you've been here a while, you know that I say um, an odd number looks better than an even number. So um, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe this one only has three. And then this one will have a couple different ones here. Oh, that's not the shape that I wanted. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do six and then end with seven. Okay, so now that we sketched those, I'm going to go back and erase them. All right, now I'm going to go back. And I'm going to erase all the things that I sketched here with my chalk, or my eraser with my chalk pastel pencil. I love, so I, if you guys do not have a um, porcelain still chalkboard, like the one I'm using today, with, um, I highly recommend if you're using um, chalk marker, it meant the chalk marker manipulates so much better on the surface. You can see that I can erase it. Yes, it will scratch off if it's dry, um, but when you are wanting to like remove items and like start over, it's a lot better than some of the porous chalkboards. Porous chalkboards are amazing with just chalk designs, which I've realized today that we haven't done just like a chalk design lately. I We've been so into the lettering and the chalk markers and all that stuff, so maybe next month for 4th of July, <clears throat> we will do a full on all chalk. I hope that sounds okay to everybody. <laughs> That's just something that I know that I'm craving because I have been using chalk markers a lot lately, um, but I do miss just like my basic chalk, so maybe we'll do that next month. Okay, you can see that these are starting to come alive now that we are getting the seeds put in place. Um, and then you can add your highlights if you want to, or you can leave them kind of like this two-dimensional look, whatever you prefer. I'm finishing up my design. <clears throat> if you feel like you have too much dead space, this is an, a great opportunity for you to add border like we talked about last month. Um, you can kind of border through all of this. I might, I might add that in a minute, I'm not sure. Um, a lot of times your design will start to develop as you get it on your chalkboard. So coming from the, the chalk um, the chalkboard on the iPad, it's a very different feel. Um, so once you get it on here, you might feel like differently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights on my bites with my chalk pencil. Just kind of, I'm just kind of adding some highlights there and then I can come back and I can add some highlights to the seeds. Just little lines to give it a little bit more depth. Okay, and then um, the lettering I'm loving. Like I'm loving the overlap of the Oh Sweet Summer. This would be really pretty. Also, if you decided to do these different colors, like it would really pop off of your chalkboard. So just giving you some other ideas. And don't be afraid to like come in and like erase a little bit of your chalk marker on your downstrokes to kind of add another element. <clears throat> so everything that's a downstroke, if you just kind of remove some of the chalk marker with your eraser and just kind of add a line, it just kind of adds more, like I said, more character, more variety to your lettering, and it kind of makes the the lettering pop off the page a little bit more. This one, I don't know what happened there. There we go. To finish our design and fill up all the dead space on the chalkboard, I'm going to add a leaf detail. 
Check out shishidesign.com for supplies, free downloads, and more resources for your chalk art and lettering. Thank you for watching this video. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and like this video. Thanks, guys.